Thank you, Chair. Uh, good, good morning, everyone. My name is Shravana Mutsnuri. I am from Ensign Global Solutions. And it's uh, today I'm going to talk about, uh, as uh, the Chair rightly mentioned, a slightly different topic, and it's an interesting topic. We just started to uh, do more analysis on. It's on peak time demand management using uh, distributed solar inverters. So this is my presentation outline. Uh, First, I would like to uh, talk about Enzen, Enzen Global, what do we do, who we are, and then set the context like uh, what's the present scenario in India with regards to power, and uh, talk about the conservation voltage reduction, which is a pretty old concept, but how can uh, the, we implement it in a new way, so that's a proposed concept, some uh, uh, basic simulation results, and the conclusion. So uh, coming to Enzen, uh, Enzen is a, uh, we are basically a knowledge uh, practitioners and innovation led company. However, we are exclusively focused on energy and utility sector, primarily focusing on powered water, gas and renewables. So globally, we are about 3000 plus uh, employees uh, in uh, 20 plus countries, UK, North America, Australia, Middle East, in India. Uh, primarily, the organization is headquartered in uh, Bangalore, but offices in different uh, parts of the world. and. Uh, so we have different uh, business verticals like energy, water, or transformations or digital enterprise. And uh, we also have subsidiaries uh, in the form of uh, wind turbine manufacturing and smart meter manufacturing. So that's the very mini advertisement for Engine Global. So, so coming to the present scenario, uh, I just wanted to set the stage so that uh, this part everyone is aware about it, but just to set the stage, uh, Roughly in the last uh, decade or more, so Indian economy has been growing pretty good. It is six to eight percent on the average, at least. And um, as we all know, there is a good target of uh, 175 gigawatts of renewables that we want to put by 2022. And uh, there is also a significant uh, electric vehicle uh, load that would be added by 2030. And uh, through, as we all know, through different programs, through uh, any MM or uh, through fame, so there's a big push on going towards more electric vehicles. And uh, this also, as like my previous speakers have talked, there's also good, uh, slowly increasing emphasis on uh, demand side management and demand response and uh, things. So with these emerging trends, so there are also some implications, both at the technical regulatory aspects. So coming from the technical side, uh, particularly with so much renewable coming into the grid, so voltage balancing becomes a challenge. So that's one. Uh, reverse power flow, especially when you are at the distribution network and when you have the uh, higher voltage, uh, or when you have higher power from the solar, so it's going back into the grid, which is uh, also one of the complications which is about to arise. And uh, particularly with the, the new electric vehicles, which uh, slowly start coming into the network, the load profile and is going to change for the entire network. So earlier when what used to be the load profile and how the design used to be done with the earlier profiles, now needs to be relooked, especially with the charge electric vehicles getting charged at random times. And one of the things with the so much of growing renewables is also they, they need to take up more responsibility to support the grid, especially during the times of grid operations and efficiencies. So no longer can renewable uh, renewable energy, once when it crosses the 15-20% uh, level, uh, it cannot say that, you know, I'm just a renewable and I can only give real power. It needs to take its due share of contributing actively to the grid balance, grid efficiency measures. So these are some of the technical uh, implications which are uh, slowly about to arise. And from the regulatory side, I think it's in the last two days as we have uh, uh, listened in various presentations. So to implement or to overcome some of these challenges and to operate grid efficiency efficiently, we need uh, uh, changes from the policy side, from the regulatory side. So uh, these are some of the implications which are about to arise. Now, primarily in this presentation, I would like to focus on this topic where uh, uh, a scenario where the renewable energy has penetrated to a good percentage. Uh, how can it take responsibility? So especially I'm looking more at the energy efficiency measure. So one of the measures which is very old method, which is pretty popular uh, in many parts of the world is the conservation voltage reduction. So very briefly, what is CVR? So it's uh, uh, 
as we know like many power devices many devices in the, that we use the power consumption is directly proportional to the voltage so if we reduce the voltage there's a good chance that the power can be reduced so cvr as a concept it uh, basically plays with uh, reducing the voltage at the distribution level but still staying within the allowed limits of plus minus five percent as an example to reduce power consumption especially during peak times so here in this picture picture i'm just showing uh, uh, for a north america example like uh, the red one is uh, you know before a cvr how the voltage through the distribution line uh, you know gets reduced uh, before CVR and uh, when you implement CVR you are actually reducing the voltage by few volts and uh, this is how the voltage would reduce in the, in the distribution circuit. So how is it generally done? So typically uh, we use the, the what, I, what I call the passive equipment which is there right now in the grid which is the tap chain transformers or the cap banks or the line voltage regulators. So these are very effective equipment, so very uh, robust and they can give a lot of good results. But there are some minor issues or I would say like still uh, points that are actually just missing or possibility explored. One is the finer control, like for example, if you take a cap capacitor bank, uh, for example, or the tap changer, so it is a step change, so it can uh, you cannot do a finer control of how much voltage you want to play with, it's basically a step change if you are just looking at one feeder. Similarly, the response speed, if you take a, a load ta tap chaining, for example, it is generally of the order of tens of seconds at the substation level. And uh, it also like, uh, there's also a reliability aspect related to it that you cannot change the, it's not efficient to change the, uh, the tap changes or uh, cap switchings many times in a day or t several times in a year because of the reliability constraint, the equipment get, gets spoiled. The third one, which is a pretty interesting one, especially with regards to the efficacy of the CVR. So when we design the CVR program and design how much voltage has to be reduced. So one of the factors that gets considered is the, the tail end of the distribution line. Even at there, at the tail end, the voltage seen by the consumer should be above or should be within the allowable band. So what happens is uh, if you try to reduce a bit more, uh, or if you uh, if you try to uh, reduce or uh, within the plus minus five percent band in the substation level, at the tail end side, the the service voltage gets reduced beyond the limits. So that actually reduces how much of bandwidth with we of the voltage with which you can play. So that is one of uh, that's what we call the extent of control or extent of efficacy that's possible with the existing uh, CVR method. So. Uh, so in this, basically what uh, I'm just talking about to talk about is a n new concept. I mean, it's, an, it's a pretty known concept in terms of the capability, but how do you apply it in terms of application? So uh, just to touch about the basics, the figure here uh, is the general control architecture, the power electronic control architecture of a typical solar inverter. So uh, the uh, most of the solar inverters we have they are capable of doing the real and reactive power control independently so as we know the real power which is a function of the atmospheric conditions the solar radiation and temperature and other stuff so it is independently controlled through the mppt algorithms and so and they also have the capability to do the reactive power and uh, as we all know the reactive power and the voltage are very closely associated so the point that I want to drive here is you can control the voltage at the point of common coupling by controlling the reactive power supplied or absorbed by the inverter. Now, uh, if you actually look at the solar profile, so and the typical solar inverter, if I take a 2 MBA, 2 megawatt peak solar uh, plant, it's only like in maybe 15, 20 minutes in the entire day where it is actually generates 2 megawatt peaks, but the rest of the time, there is this the uphill and the downhill where the power throughout the day the power increases and then slowly decreases so the amount of reactive power or the amount of uh, that can be generated is typically uh, a function of the switches the switch capacities but it's not a function of actually the real power so here in this pie chart uh, what i'm showing here is uh, if i am supplying a hundred percent real power if I have to, uh, if I overrate my inverter just by 10%, I have a capability to supply or absorb up to 46% rated 
uh, reactive power. So this is just to show if I have to generate 100% real power at the same time uh, generate reactive power, especially at the peak times. But I was just mentioning, so you have peak times only 20 minutes and most of the time you have a lot of capacity available. So you, what happens is many times you don't have to override your inverter, you can use the same capacity inverter and still generate the 100% real power and generate what how much of reactive power that you can generate so which will in turn help you in controlling the voltage so just to show i mean most of the major uh, inverter manufacturers like AB, uh, eaton sma delta schneider so everyone has these features where the uh, voltage control or the through the reactive power uh, control is possible so what i'm just talking here is in addition to what gets done through the uh, the the passive the through the passive uh, elements of uh, the uh, uh, you know the, the CVR so like for example in addition to the transformer and the cap banks you can actually utilize this distributed solar inverters in the grid to actually reduce or play with the voltage at the point of common coupling so that gives a lot of dynamic and finer control of voltage and especially the inverter being a semiconductor device and it's operated at very high frequency, you can actually get much quicker response. So what the another advantage, which is, uh, is I was just mentioning earlier. So this is how if you just take a, as an example, a, a typical, uh, uh, typical home, uh, a feeder supply in different homes. So the red line shows the, the natural re reduction in the voltage because of the line losses. The green is the uh, voltage reduction because of the conservation voltage reduction CVR. As you can see, at the, at this point, the beyond this point at the 116 volts in this case, so it is it, it uh, we cannot reduce the voltage any further because of uh, the the limits that have uh, put on from the standard side. So that actually to uh, uh, that actually restricts how much of voltage can I reduce at the sending end because of uh, the the line losses are anyhow the uh, uh, is a function of the distribution line so how much of voltage can i reduce here so that this point is still uh, not uh, beyond the limit so what here the other advantage with this distributed solar inverters is so i have for example at the tail end a couple of solar inverters on the rooftop for example so what they can do is they can actually supply reactive power and try to increase the voltage at these couple of points here so that I have a bandwidth available at the sending end to cause a much further reduction. So the benefit with that is you actually have through a good part of the distribution line a much further reduction in the voltage reducing, uh, resulting in much higher energy savings. So this is the another advantage of uh, this. So how does it get uh, implemented? So uh, as uh, General, this is a dynamic system, so you would need to have some kind of a centralized control, so which actually sits in the distribution control center, and it keeps interacting with the different solar plants or the inverters spread throughout the distribution grid. And when the CVR event has to be invoked in conjunction with the traditional methods, so the, uh, the appropriate set points are sent to, uh, the, to the inverters spread geographically. So this enables the finer, quicker, and scalable way of implementing voltage control resulting in the savings. So what I have done here is I have done some uh, very quick analysis of uh, okay, how the uh, savings actually look like. So this is a very uh, basic, uh, very simple simulation. This is before CBR on the left hand side showing uh, a very simple uh, one bus or two bus network. And I have uh, for simplicity uh, uh, assumed an aggregated solar of 100 megawatt. I know it's a bit higher scales, but uh, just for simplicity. and. Uh, it is supplying a load of about uh, 300, close to about 300 megawatts. So, when I have implemented the uh, the CVR through this concept, I have asked the solar to uh, absorb the reactive power, thereby resulting in actually reducing the the bus voltage. So, in this case, the bus voltage has actually reduced by 0.01 per unit, so which is causing about 3 megawatts reduction. So, one point that I want to note here is. Uh, just to be fair, I do not to take the complete capacity of the solar available for reactive compensation. 
I just used only like 40 per 35 percent of uh, reactive power. So that's assuming I'm operating sometime around 12, 12 30 in the noon. So I can have only 30 percent bandwidth available for uh, react to uh, compensation. So, so this is which a much bigger system. Uh, again, an aggregated load is uh, uh, is considered here. So where we have a solar and uh, maybe even EV charging, which has more of uh, uh, if solar based EV charging with uh, inverters and everything at the bus four, and at bus seven again there is a big solar uh, farm. So in this case, uh, so here is the simulation result showing for the, this multibus system. So before CVR, so the voltage was pretty good and the table here gives the uh, load numbers. So when I do the CVR and uh, I get the voltage, so as you can see there is immediately uh, a good reduction in the voltage because of the solar absorbing some reactive power and uh, there is a power savings of 16 megawatts. Now as you can see I still have some bandwidth to play with like if I assume 0.95 is the the lower threshold that I can play with, I have two or three buses which are still at 0.96 or 0.97. So I still have some bandwidth to play with, so I did some optimization of so, uh, you know, increasing the reactive power if possible on some of these plants and uh, you know, invoking the cap bank. So as you can see, the actually the power saving has actually increased by four more megawatts. So in this case, so I'm talking about a power saved of about 20 megawatts. Again, this is a basic simulation analysis. I know that this is not a very realistic, the megawatt plant or everything are not a huge numbers, but uh, these are initial results low where we uh, want to actually go with a much more realistic plant numbers and show on a real case how the benefits look like. Yeah, so I'm almost done. So uh, now with the, this as a concept, now I just want to give as an example the state of Karnataka. So this is, as of uh, last year, around December time frame, these are the different megawatt scale solar plants in Karnataka as of last December. So uh, now you can imagine if this concept with this, you have a distributed, not just a real power, but as a reactive power also possible to do the voltage control in the entire grid, in the entire uh, network. So what is the possibility that comes out? It's a tremendous uh, possibility. So just wanted to touch up on that. So. Uh, so in conclusion, basically I just wanted to say, so just uh, uh, reinvent the wheel of, which many people know like the solar inverters have the capability to dynamically absorb generate reactive power. It, we are uh, using this concept to, uh, in a different way, implement CVR in conjunction with the existing uh, methods as well. And uh, the advantage would be the granularity of control, flexibility and uh, response speed. I think I'm just right on time and that's all I have right now. Thank you. Thank you, Shravana. Any questions, if anyone has? Kiran Alla from BSS Rajdhani. Uh, question to Shravana is, uh, the CVR, the benefits from CVR themselves are slightly controversial because uh, what is the kind of load you are considered? Uh, that's uh, very critical. Uh, second, but I, uh, the, the solar inverter kind of benefit, that four megawatt incremental seems very interesting. So what kind of load have you modeled? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So the benefits of CVR is uh, highly dependent on the type of load and it's a very heavily researched topic for the last three decades. So here in this case, I consider the constant impedance loads for just to make my life simple because the emphasis was more on the, so it was basically, I didn't show the results here for the dynamic analysis, but first to see, is it really possible through solar inverter? Yes. Second, then how to show it at a system level, how is it working? But uh, yeah, uh, for this simulation, I just considered it as a constant impedance load, yeah. Any other question? Okay, thank you, Shravna. Uh, very good concept. And again, I think if we have some more POCs, uh, we'll be able to uh, really test it in the field that what exactly are the results and what are the challenges.